Hey everyone, I'm Artosis, and I have a very nice replay here for everyone to see. I haven't watched it yet, but uh, this says Namja Iyagi. If you're an old school StarCraft 1 player, you may remember that. It was the name of a Twilight tile set map, a very popular Pro League map for a while. It actually means something like uh, the way of the man, something like that. Anyways, this is Liquid Ret playing on a Smurf ID. Over here we have Pult Prime. And, of course, Pult Prime, a Code S Terran player. He's had some very notable wins, knocking out people like Genius in the first season. And then, well, anyways, he made it to Code S. He got third place in his group. Uh, you know, he went one and one with the best Foyu. And uh, he will be in the up and down matches, but still in Code S. So uh, this is just some random ladder match that was sent to me. So I'm pretty excited to see how it goes. Of course, Rhett is... Well, he was in Code A, he fell out of it, but uh, I'm sure he'll have another shot in the new qualifiers coming out. One of the best Zergs in the world. And uh, an amazing Zerg versus Terran player. Quite excited to see what kind of style he's going to show us here today. Rhett known for macro. He loves to make drones. Sometimes he overmakes them, in fact. And uh, normally when you see Rhett lose, that is why he will have overmade drones slightly and someone will kill him because of that. So, uh... That is basically his weakness. Now we see Rhett's going to go down, do a hatchery first. And that's good on this map. If your opponent goes for two barracks, it can be tricky because you can't get a spine crawler over at the ramp. So they use the ramp. Sometimes they put a bunker at the bottom of it to help uh, micro back and forth against Zerglings. But this is a very thin area, so it can be hard against two barracks, which we see Pulp Prime doing. So we're going to have to see if Pulp Prime wants to get really aggressive with this build. Or maybe he's just doing the two barracks into expansion build. Don't know. We'll see soon enough, and we will also see how Rhett ends up dealing with that. Now notice Rhett getting the spawning pool and the gas right after uh, his expansion. That's going to be for Zerglings and most likely Zergling speed. And as his drone scouts this, notice he runs away immediately. There's nothing else that he needs to scout. Uh, Pult Prime would not add a third or fourth barracks until that drone is gone. So basically he's seen everything. He knows there's no gas. He knows there's no command center. This is all that there can be right now. Saves that drone. One extra drone actually makes a huge difference. So very good idea by Rhett. Let's take a look here. 17 drones to 16 SCVs. And uh, as this hatchery pops and we do get a queen out for Rhett, that number should go up a little bit. But he's got to be careful balancing the drones with Zerglings. Because Pult Prime is already moving across the map. As you see here, more and more Marines coming out. Just pumping them. Not sending any SVs yet, so this is in no way all in. Just a pressure build right now. In fact, going down to make the command center. So a very good pressure build at that. Forcing Rhett into 10 Zerglings. Notice how many Zerglings he's making. He can't make a spine crawler, so he has to make extra Zerglings to compensate for that. 10 Zerglings, that is 5 less drones than he would most likely want. Of course, you're always going to make some Zerglings, though. Rhett scouts this command center. He's going to realize, okay, I'm pretty safe. I'm going to make some more Zerglings. I'm going to get my speed, get my queens out. But this does not look like it's going to be an all-in. Still, it's hard to say. Even with making the command center, you can support non-stop Marines, even though Pult has slowed that down in favor of getting a couple gases. So Rhett going to go out here with these Zerglings. He's going to go after these Marines. And he does decide to turn around better late than never, but that certainly was late. Pult Prime with seven Marines absolutely plowing down a lot of the Zerglings Rhett had. Now will Pult Prime tack up? Nope, just going back to the Zelnaga Watchtower. The thing is, he can sit there fine for a little bit, but when speed finishes, he has to be very careful. He realizes that, backs up, notice speed is, in fact, on the way. And, uh, well... Looks like Rhett just making more and more Zerglings. He has plenty of Zerglings at this point. Realizes it's too dangerous not to have them. He's got good drone saturation so far. Up to 21 drones. About the same as our Terran player. Got the two queens out. Starting his creep tumors a little bit. Has the... Ooh, he's got three queens out, in fact. So smart. You've got to get that third queen in this matchup. Spreading creep. One of the most important things in the game. Notice that Rhett now pumping out a ton of drones. He does have speed. He can start scouting the map a lot. Get rid of any SVs, get some map control on. But Pult is pretty safe. He's got the three barracks. Got a factory going up. And his command center is done along with his orbital. So he's going to have a lot of mules coming out here. Now, Rhett, I expect to see... Yeah, there it is, the layer. I was just going to say, I expect to see a layer pretty soon. And as he gets that layer, adding some additional gases. We'll probably see the third gas pretty soon, then the fourth gas a little bit later. Uh, now, there's a few ways you can go about this. 
well, hold up the phone. It looks like Rhett is just hitting these rocks a little bit. It's important for Zerg to nail down these rocks some as they can because you want to be able to uh, run through and do run by the Zerglings and stuff like that later game. But anyways, as Zerg scouts, uh, very nice by Cole Prime, by the way. Not going just barracks, but teching up, in fact, as well. Looks like he may go for Siege Tank Marine Timing Push. But anyways, Rhett's going to have to be very careful. You want to get Mutalisks out, but if they hit a timing attack with Marines and Stim and everything like that, notice the Baneling that's coming up. You need Banelings, you need speed Banelings most of the time to actually stop it. And a lot of how you stop it is how far out your creep gets. Uh, for those of you who missed it, I just commentated a game against uh, Marine King Prime with Rhett where the creep spread along with quick baneling speed actually won Rhett the game. So it's something very important to have out there. In fact, Terran players, when they see the creep way out, when they realize that baneling speed is done, should be very careful about attacking because notice this, Rhett with very quick baneling speed and that's just going to make him quite safe. Now Pult Prime finally getting some reactors up. Getting his tech lab up, time to start upgrading that, is getting plus one attack for his marines. Also getting siege tanks with siege one, so it really looks like he is just going to go for a very strong timing attack. And if in fact he does just sit here and make units for a little bit, it's going to become a little bit all-in-ish. Won't transition overly well into a late game, a good strong late game, uh, unless he does a ton of damage because he has very few production facilities. Not a whole lot of tech as we don't see any starports yet, so... He's got to be careful with this. He's got to do good damage with it. Uh, we will see if he's able to do that, though. Now, notice Rhett pushing out these creep tumors. I know I've said it before, but I'm going to keep saying it till everyone's doing it. Put your creep tumors on a timer. Do them all at once. Notice it's going to do all those. It's going to go over here and do this one, most likely, and this one. Well, he made me look stupid this time, but that's normally how Rhett does it. That's how all the top Zergs are starting to do it. You put all your creep tumors on a timer so you don't jump around and do them at different times. It's a lot quicker that way, a lot more organized. Do something like, okay, do my larva injects, bam, bam. Now do my creep tumors, push those all over the place, and then go do other stuff. Then hit your larva injects again, and then hit your creep tumors again. That is absolutely the way you're going to want to do it. Uh, you'll just get more of them done that way. It'll be more efficient. You won't forget about them. Just put them on a timer in your head. Anyways, so, Pult Prime getting an armory so he can get his plus two attack. Might upgrade uh, Siege Tank attack. That's actually a pretty good move. Siege Tank's doing a lot of damage to Banelings and uh, Zerglings. You want them to get those plus attack upgrades. But, ooh, Pult Prime. It looked for a moment like he was going to do some sort of all-in, you know, marine tank timing. But in fact, getting the thing at factory, getting good upgrades going. He's going to get the plus two most likely here, as well as the plus one tank attack. Getting the starport tech and a command center. So this is not all-in. This is actually a very nice build it has turned into. Even getting a Thor out to help deal with any mutas. Rhett, in the meantime, taking a third base over here. Notice his creep. This is Rhett is really and truly one of the best creep spreaders in the game. Much better than any Korean pro I can think of. Uh, just pushing non-stop creep all over the map. And this is going to help him to get the elusive fourth base. The third base is hard enough to get on this map in Zerg vs. Terran Jungle Basin. is a very difficult map for that. But the fourth base can become almost impossible. And in fact, as his creep approaches this area where Terran always takes their third, that's going to slow down a planetary fortress from being made. It's going to slow down the Terran from stabilizing the center and actually attacking into your other bases. So, Rhett doing a great job with his creep expansion, and now it's time for some mutilisk harassment, and he's going to go in here. There is a bunker with a couple marines, a siege shank, some uh, missile turrets, and Rhett going to go ahead and finish off these rocks to just kind of scare Paul Prime. Will he do many Baneling counters? Well, against all this, probably not. But uh, at least there is always the threat, so some of the supply of Paul Prime is going to have to stay back there and defend. Now, notice Rhett even hitting some high ground here. He wants creep everywhere. It gives vision. You never know when you might actually just want to run stuff back there real quick. Uh, you'll probably want to get this going all the way up to this hatchery pretty soon. And let's take a look at the supplies while the game is a little bit slow. 155 for Rhett, 141 for Pult Prime. Pult Prime coming out here, taking a very well-timed base. And I gotta tell you, I am actually really impressed with Pult Prime's uh, Terran vs. Zerg. Anyone who's been watching the GSL Code S recently, uh, Pult Prime didn't have the most impressive matches in his group. But that was mostly Terran vs. Terran matches, so, uh... I'm, this is actually quite strong, quite solid style. Notice he's getting the planetary. Notice he's getting some missile turrets up to stop mutas. 
good Sea Chain placement. It's behind a little bit. You don't really need them all up here. And so Rhett's just going to have to be very careful. Notice a little bit of harassment going on. Just Marines stimming out to stop that. Bunker going up once again. Some more missile turrets as well. Rhett making... Ooh, I like that. Making some spine crawls. This will simply slow any pushes in this direction. And that's what you need to do with Zerg. You have to stall quite a bit. Hasn't started his hive yet, which is fine. Wants to stay on the layer tech for a little bit. Get some more upgrades. Get some more units, some more supply. And, uh... Just slow the Terran down while Zerg gets as much as possible. It looks like Rhett is going to do a strong attack to the back here. And nothing are, is in those bunkers. In fact, he gets in front of the bunkers. Marines are going to have a hard time getting in there. He kills off a lot of Marines. And those bunkers are going to go down so, so fast. And this is bad for Pole Prime. He is going to stim and run down with some more Marines. They do have the plus one attack. But plus one on the Mutas. The Zerglings don't have their upgrades yet. But Rhett has already done some very good damage. And that is not the best place to attack into with those. But the Siege Tanks helping the Zerglings with their job. And Rhett looks like he may want to run away now. Just doing some last minute harassment damage with those Zerglings on the SCVs. Oh, beautiful. Killing so many SCVs there. With his Mutas just making sure they stay alive. It's okay to lose the uh, Zerglings getting SCVs. The Mutas, not so much. So let's take a look at the unit counting station. Only 42 SCVs now against 67 drones. So Rhett in a pretty good position here. We see supply-wise, he's way ahead in supply now. 160 against 107. But Pole Prime, look at this, throwing down a ton of mules. He's got a very defended area here at the third base. Rhett, though, does have a whole ton of mutas moving up the side of the map. And it is looking like he may be going in to hit the main base. There's only a few missile turrets for defense. That is not enough, so he is going to fly in here. And this is going to be hard for Pole to actually do anything against. A lot of SCVs going down. And at the same time, Rhett trying to do a counterattack over here may want to run away with that as there's a lot of bunkers in there. And ooh, Rhett actually losing quite a few mutas, but he wants to take down this orbital, stop the mule production quite a bit. Oh, the SCVs repaired just in time. So Rhett losing some mutas that he probably did not want to lose. But that's okay because he's getting further and further ahead. Even though Pult Prime is catching up in supply a little bit, his SCV count at this point is terrible. Only 35 against the 67 for Rhett. So uh, Rhett getting very far ahead. He's got these gases over here. Notice the spine crawlers just slow down any attacks. Same over here. In fact, we missed one during that harassment where he probably just tacked up and was like, oh, spine crawlers and walks away. And of course, Rhett has good saturation all over the place. Finally getting his hive up. Has that infestation pit. And we're going to have to see what he wants to tech to. Uh, it could be Broodlords. I have a feeling that's what it's going to be because there are two factories in pulled space against a lot of siege tank broodlords are amazing and here's a problem actually pulled does not have a lot of upgrades i thought he was going to get more than that he does have plus two attack on the way plus two attack for siege tanks as well but it's a little bit slow meantime Rhett has one one with two two on the way and needle is going to go back in kill a bunch more scvs oh no pull prime losing so many scvs 70 drones for at 29 scvs for full prime and in fact gonna take down that army will he get it before that upgrade is done oh i have to find a unit to check and he does he kills it just a second before that upgrade finishes that is so frustrating for pole prime here but Pult's gonna push down try to take out what would be the fifth base of rat but really not moving around enough uh, anyone who watched general playing the gsl recently on this map uh just beautiful play against hydra constantly hitting on the sides, as Tasos called it, the Octopus Terran, just shooting out in every which direction, attacking expansions, but this one is not even up yet, not the most important place to attack. Rhett, though, a ton of mutas come in, that is not so many Marines, and the Thor are going to scare him away. But Rhett is looking pretty invincible at this point. A lot of Banelings, a lot of Zerglings. Let's take a look at the supplies. Red at 188, 158 for Pult. And he's just going to rush in here. And as long as he kills off the Marines with the Banelings, the Mutes are going to be able to clean up everything else. And those Marines are looking quite dead. It looks like Red is getting pretty far ahead here. But the Siege Tanks kill off a lot of Banelings. So Red's supply does plummet to 150. Pult Prime heading up about 130. So the beginning of a comeback perhaps. But his economy is just so low. Uh, if we look at income, even with all the mules that he has, Rhett has almost twice the income here. So uh, he's doing quite well with that. And it looks like Rhett's mute is going to kill some more Sea Chinks. You cannot let Sea Chinks die like that. Oh, that was very sloppy by Pult. 
But Polt running forward with some Marines and Medivacs. Has a few Vikings in there as well. And uh, Rhett just keeps on reinforcing. Keeps making mutas. I'm surprised he's not upgrading anymore for how many he's making of them. Does have the 2-2 though. Uh, for his Zerglings. And... Let's see, what other upgrades? Has not going to Adrenal. In fact, not using the Hive for anything right now. Holt going to take out this what would be a fifth base for Rhett. So, a small victory, but a victory nonetheless. A bunch of mutas coming in the main base of Holt, just punishing him for having only turrets up there. In fact, Zergling's running at the same time, and they are just going to add to Holt's headache here. Holt has to make some sort of strong move pretty quickly, because this is starting to look pretty bad for him, actually. And, uh, well, looks like these mutas may, in fact, end the game. I don't know. We could be seeing a GG pretty soon here. Pult's uh, supply is dropping so far down to 100. Brett's still up at about 150. But some plus two Marines coming in. They will chase out these mutas. But still, the damage has been done. Let's take a look at the unit counting station. Once again, only 30 SCVs. And we are, like... 23 minutes in the game almost. That is very, very painful, especially when Rhett has 85 drones. His economy is absolutely insane. And what is Pulp Prime's actual plan here? I don't know. It's hard to say. And Rhett's just going to take out some missile turrets, take out some siege tanks. We're well, mostly just going for the siege tanks there. Removing those so his banelings can come in and clean up Marines. Really, Marines are the only defense that Pulp Prime has against the Mutalisks. So that is very, very important for Rhett to take those out. Now, Rhett is going to take a 5th base. Looks like Rhett wants to kill off some more Siege Tanks. And now we're having mostly just Marines left over for Pol. But they do have good upgrades. He has a good amount of them. And picking off some drones. So trying to get some sort of damage on. But he's got to be careful because Speed Banelings, here they come. Going across the creep. And Pol's going to have a hard time running away from those. And Rhett just running in. A lot of Zerglings on their tails. They do have 2-2. Two -two. The Muta's coming in as well. Going to target down some Siege Tanks. And will he go for the orbital? I mean, the planetary does. Kills off the planetary with the banelings. He's far enough ahead that he absolutely can do that. Pull at only 100 supply, 133 for Rhett. So basically, Rhett has to just fend off this group of marines, and he should be good to go. Because there's really no economy. Look at that. That's all the economy Pull has. That is that is nothing at all. So Pull in a terrible position, and Rhett coming in with more banes. Oh my god. And that should be it. I expect GG momentarily. Pult with really nothing left here. Rhett fully mining from here, fully mining from here. Mined out his uh, natural ton of drones back there, though. <coughs> and uh, basically, Rhett just has to remake units and kind of, you know, sit there. Pult, though, decides that, well, I'm going to go ahead and try to keep staying in this game. I have a bunch of mules. Going to be able to refill his minerals pretty quickly there. But, you know, there's not a whole lot to do here. I mean, it's not a planetary anymore. It's going to be harder to defend. He's got one siege tank, or, yeah, just one siege tank here. Is making some more, sure, but just not a very sizable army. Rhett has more than enough economy and units to be able to actually take this out. Pull Prime standing on his last legs at the moment. Uh, yeah, it looks like as these Banelings hatch, I imagine Rhett will right-click them at Pull Prime, and Pull Prime will die. That's my, uh, my guess as to what's going to happen. So we will have to see. By the way, seven kills on this missile turret. That's pretty crazy. Seven mutas killed with one missile turret. That is... What a godly missile turret. Should get the Medal of Honor. It looks like these mutas are going to come back here, try to knock off some siege tanks, just target them down, because, well, the Banelings can take care of the Marines, no problem. So it does get rid of one. Only two siege tanks left over. Rhett just playing it safe. No reason to just suicide his units in right now. Just keep making. Support Ursaduck Cal. He doesn't know what to do sitting in a creepy world. All the minerals being mined out. His natural resources being plundered. It's a very sad story. Now, Pult Prime looks like he wants to take out this base again, but again, Rhett with such an economy. He has made an Ultras cabinet at this point, and in fact is popping out some Ultras. So, the Ultras are going to be able to tank any damage from the tanks. Ha ha ha. Tanking damage, of course, is taking the damage for the rest of your army, which is weaker. And then the Banelings will come in and clean everything up. Mute is still trying to pick off some Siege Shanks here and there. And five more Ultras are on the way. So he's going to have seven Ultras. Here comes some more. Even more, I guess. Just tons of Ultras coming out for Rhett. And damages Pult Prime's Marines. Pult only at 103 supply. 183 for Rhett. Just kind of waiting for him to finish the game off. Come on, Rhett. Finish the game off. This guy's dead.
Have some ultras being produced still. I do like Terran music a lot, by the way. It's really, really good. Come on. Almost seems... Well, Rhett has maxed out at this point. And, uh, you know, it's... Here we go. This is going to be it, then. The Banelings are coming up, as are the Ultralists. And he is just going to absolutely rush through this. Well, the Marines actually do very, very well against Ultras, but still, there's so many, and he has great upgrades at this point. Taking out those Siege Shanks, he can just rally up with whatever he wants. Seven more Ultras being made right now, and Rhett does kill off Pole Prime. GG, very nice game. Thank you all for watching.